and wireless charging is also a big, big thing that we're talking about. But another thing that's really big, automotive, huge category, but it was only until recently really a huge category, and that's because someone has to step up to the plate to be first. And I'm here with, right now, my guest that was first, Mike Tinsky, who is with Ford. Ford was absolutely first at being at the CES show, not just this year, first in general at automotive. being at CES. Yeah. I don't remember exactly what year that was. I think, uh, we're, I think we're going about eight years ago. Is that right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, so back then, you guys were really showcasing apps in the vehicle and uh, even some vehicle to vehicle technology. You were talking about the future of vehicles and technology. Yeah. And you guys saw a consumer electronics show typically for a place for gadgets and devices as a place where an automobile manufacturer should be yep. uh, should be presented. Exactly, exactly. In fact, this is the show we introduced Sync Gen 1. Yeah, that's right. Seven years ago that's uh, right. at this show. That's right. I think, uh, yeah, you were on stage. I think you were on stage with, uh, with Bill Gates at the time. And, and uh, Mark Fields was. Our, yeah, yeah. our now CEO was right. up there. So, uh, yeah, it's a, it's a great show, and it's great to see everybody here. Yeah, so what, when you think about CES and consumer electronics and, and that world, how does the automobile industry fit into that space? Well, um, I focus a lot on electrification. So we do a lot of electric vehicles. We do a lot of connected vehicles. Yep. Um, today, or here at our show today, we're talking about Sync Gen 3, which is the okay. third generation of Sync that we just talked about. It's better, it's faster, it's got more features, and it's it's really the heart of uh, becoming the heart of the automobile and the, the lead interface with the customer as they're driving. So it gives their epic, epic uh, entertainment experience, okay. all, all in one. And so for those that don't know Sync, maybe they're yep. seeing this for the first time or they never heard yeah. of it before. Yep. Walk, walk us through, you know, how the voice recognition and how all how the technology actually works to make it easier for you to, to, to use technology within your vehicle. Yeah, I mean, from a sync perspective, it, it's bringing all of that into one unit. So you can bring your phone and you bring your phone experiences with you. So for example, if you want to listen to music through Pandora, you can simply hit a button on your steering wheel. Sync will ask you through a voice, what would you like to do? You can say Pandora. You can even recommend a station. It'll do all of that automatically. So you got your hands on the wheel, eyes on the road. Right. Um, so it's it's really a seamless experience of bringing your your not only your uh, your vehicle controls but also your phone controls into the vehicle. Um, so I think the the consumer electronics show has been absolutely the perfect place to introduce our new concepts like Sync Gen Three. But also um, we're doing some really neat stuff on non-sync where we're actually looking at some connected uh, experiments that are doing some really cool like stuff. Like what? Give us a taste. So um, on? I, one, a couple of them that I think are really neat is, have you ever had a pro problem finding a parking space? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, everyone can relate to that. Yeah, <laughs> so, um, well, we said, well, why, you know, why is it so hard? It hasn't changed in like 80 years. Right. Parking is still the same. So we've actually equipped our vehicle with, uh, with the small ultrasonic sensor. And so as that vehicle drives down the street, it's actually looking for open and not open parking, sending that information up to a cloud and then you as the next customer can see, oh, on Fifth Avenue, there's three open spots. And so uh, using the vehicle as a probe. Yeah, using the vehicle itself to make, be aware of its surroundings and then be able to feed that information out so that other people can benefit from that. Is Absolutely. That, yeah. it's, it's, it's like crowdsourcing using right. the vehicle. Right, right. The other one that I really uh, that we really think is neat is we hear a lot about autonomous vehicles. Yes. And, and yep. we're hearing a lot you of You know I was going to bring up uh, self-driving and autonomous I knew vehicles. you were going to bring it up, you know, so I had to come up. Right. Um, <laughs> But you know, autonomous has got a lot of challenges, and we do believe it's in the future, but it's gonna be some time. So, but you also know that LTE networks and 4G networks have really improved in terms of capability. Right. So another one of our experiments is we're actually remotely driving a vehicle from an office or from a home using a standard cellular network. So we have three cameras, it gives you the same experience as if you're sitting physically in the vehicle. Wow. And you can actually drive it at low speeds just as if you're sitting in a vehicle. Yeah. yeah. So think of you, you and your significant other is going to a restaurant. It doesn't have valet. You get out, it's raining. You get out, go to the restaurant, and you can have somebody remotely take the vehicle from there, put it in a spot, <laughs> and come back. So those those things, I think, are really becoming more interesting. Yeah, that's kind of cool. Uh, yep. One of the other things I want to talk to you about, yep. too, is uh, connected, to, connected car, like yep. car-to-car technology. Yep. What else are you kind of seeing in terms of safety that you guys have been looking at things so like where you can be aware of other vehicles in front of you or reroute you because there's accidents up ahead. What are some of those technologies? That's that right. Using? That's right. So the connectivity comes from both ways. So as you mentioned, the the app-based 
connectivity, such as Google and others, you're able to actually see uh, accidents, and others uh, yeah. through Waze can report accidents. Right, so that right. that's a pretty well known and well established. Yep. But the new and emerging one is the other one you hit, which is basically vehicle to vehicle communication. It's using the same version of Wi-Fi, but vehicle to vehicle. Right. And so, if you if a vehicle up front does do a, an emergency braking, does do uh, some uh, some uh, extraordinary maneuver, that information could be very back. quickly fed back, yeah. and so your response time could be much quicker. That's great, and that's coming right up. I gotta let you go, real quick. What's the one thing about this show that really blows you away when you're not Ford related, like anything catch your mind, or just you know the ambiance, the air, the energy, anything about this show that just like hits you and just like. Well, I'll tell you, so I, this is my sixth year, okay. uh, consecutive year. I can tell you that the pace yeah. of change is is unprecedented. I, it, it, I mean, wearables yep. and it's, fitness, it's, it's just, it's, 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 connectivity has just gone. And the pace of change is moving right now. I got to change out, let you go. Great talking with you. <laughs> Keep going with this show. Thanks Thank so you. much for, this, for uh, stopping by and telling us what's going on with Ford. Thank That's you. Mike Tinsky with Ford. I want you guys to pay attention to our Twitter to follow all of the activity that we have going on here at the show. There are a couple of hashtags that you definitely, definitely should follow along on Twitter. Uh, you can follow me at Mario Armstrong for sure, but also our hashtag, the official hashtag of CES is hashtag CES 2015. So you want to follow that. That'll give you all types of information that's happening from everyone that's tweeting from the show and everything about the show. You can look at that feed and see all that good stuff. And of course, for all of my fun, silly antics and other cool, informative things, you can go to Mario at CES or hashtag Mario's at uh, CES. And then also KillerApps.tv. If you want to find out any of the video that I've shot earlier or some of the packages that I've done or some of the interviews that we've done earlier, head on over to KillerApps.tv. You can get a lot of information right there uh, from there as well. Right now, we're going to take a look at some of the behind the scenes and what's actually taking place here at the Ford Let's take a look. Hi, I'm Stefan Bankowski. Uh, I'm an Apple Inc. engineer uh, working at Ford Motor Company. I'm here to talk to you about uh, Sync 3, our new platform for infotainment, uh, as well as some other features like App Link. Here we have uh, our, our new Sync 3 system, uh, which features some of our domains uh, at the bottom that you can easily access via touch or via voice. Um, right now I'm in the apps domain, and I have some apps that are connected uh, through App Link that are on my iPhone, which is connected via USB. Uh, here we have Spotify, AccuWeather, and NPR One. Um, I have Spotify running. Uh, it's connected, the app itself is driving the interface within the vehicle. Uh, it's playing music, uh, as well as providing graphic art and metadata. And I can control it via voice or via the touch screen, or even steering wheel controls. So in this case, if I want to skip a track, I can press it on the steering wheel, and it skips to the next song. Different apps I can use, such as AccuWeather. You know, so while I'm listening to Spotify, I can uh, access AccuWeather and get uh, some of the latest weather updates. Um, in this case, I get a minute cast, see that there's rain in 17 minutes, and it gives me some other information uh, about the weather. Uh, looking at other parts of Sync Gen 3, uh, we have uh, access to climate. Um, we have some via the hard buttons as well as on the touch screen uh, to, to allow user different uh, ways to control uh, climate in the car. We have access to, to the phone, um, the, uh, so you can make phone calls or, or receive them or text messages. Um, we also have, of course, navigation. Um, so here we have a capacitive uh, touch that allows us to, to even do pinch and zoom um, and do some uh, quick, quick searches for uh, destinations.
One thing that's uh, very, very uh, useful and easy to use on uh, Sync 3 is um, one box search for navigation. Uh, so let's say I wanted to go to Home Depot. Uh, I can start to type Home Depot and after uh, you know, a few letters, it's already predicting you know, some possible POIs. Here I see Home Depot, I don't have to continue typing. I can just select that. It's gonna find uh, the nearest uh, locations. I can select that and get a route started. That's basically some of the major uh, features on Sync 3. Uh, it's a fast and easy to use system. It's very intuitive uh, and uh, it's looking to be released uh, later this year. That was the Ford booth. You can see tons of activity happening here at Ford. Lots of innovation happening in the automobile industry.